Oh, it's amazing the conversations you have while the commercials are running and the break is in. Uh, Dylan Switzer, uh, back uh, from uh, from about uh, four or five days away. Uh, and uh, and I, listen, you have not given me permission to do this, but I've got to. Uh, you've been to Atlanta, Georgia. I have. Um, and you arrived home last night. Uh, rather late, <laughs> went home, threw yourself into bed, rolled out this morning, shaved, showered, uh, put on your tie and suit, and here you are this morning. I, I thank you for uh, stepping above and beyond. Hey, I might just be looking for a little help for you this morning. So. <laughs> so talk to me about Atlanta, first of all. Ever been there before? Never been there before. All new experience. Liked it? Loved it, actually. Yeah. Food? Food was amazing. People were great, very welcoming. Hey, it was 28 to 32 Celsius every day. No kidding. Can't tell you what that is in Fahrenheit, but it was lovely. No kidding. So where I wanted to go with this really is, is, is uh, you know, I mean, let's face it, it doesn't matter which side of the border you're on, whether you're living north in Canada or south in the United States, most of the conversation revolves around November the 8th. Americans are seven days away, seven days today. One week from today, Americans are going to be full on into the vote. Oh, I'll be I'll be tuning in too. Yeah, no kidding, absolutely. Is there much conversation among the people you were hanging out with, or or did they, uh, out of deference to their Canadian guest, uh, stay away from American politics? Well, I'll put it this way, and I don't necessarily mean it in a bad way, but I was in L.A. on the West Coast here about six weeks ago, and there, everybody who heard you were Canadian kind of wanted your opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about what's going on down here? Yeah, a little bit of that. In yeah. a, in Atlanta, I found that everybody wanted to tell you their opinion, and they weren't as interested from what the rest of the world was seeing. But hey, people on both sides of the coin and some interesting thoughts out there. Okay, so less than 24 hours ago, you turned your back on Atlanta, flew home. Um, Did you have a sense of how Atlanteans feel that this presidential race is going to go? I mean, let's face it, since last Friday when uh, uh, Comey uh, uh, dropped this uh, email bombshell into the middle of the Clinton campaign and uh, gave Donald Trump a bit of a boost, uh, was, in some people's minds, Pretty good cakewalk, pretty easy walk for Ms. Clinton uh, now is much, much tighter. The people that I was talking to, I don't think it was that that uh, new FBA, FBI revelation really is going to change much. I think those that were entrenched in one side of the line, they're not going to move. They're not moving. And I got the sense that most people in Atlanta, they, they've already picked who they're voting for. And they, they might feel better or worse about their decision, but they ain't moving on it. Right. The state of Georgia is, uh, is uh, sort of, you just sort of think of it as, uh, what is the peach state they call Georgia, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And what I found actually interesting is, I only saw some, only one example of really overt political advertising when I was there, but it was a little plane towing one of those flags through the sky, yeah. and it basically said... Um, Atl- Make America great again. Well, it said, it said <laughs> um, Atl- Atlanta Chinese for Trump, and uh, that was not one of the things that I expected to see down there. Atlanta Chinese. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, they were pouring some bucks. Given, given Trump's attitudes towards other races other than white folk... Uh, and given some of the things that he says uh, about Im- immigrants and migrants and 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 borders and whatever, I would I, I would agree with you. I would have uh, I would have been dumbfounded and been very surprised uh, to see that kind of a flag being flown over the over the city. Would have been a great conversation to have if you could find the guy who was putting up the box. I can tell you that. <laughs> no kidding. Well, you know what? Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be a, a, an electoral experience, the likes of which Americans um, really, I think, don't comprehend uh, what they've done to their country, <laughs> uh, what Donald Trump has done to the Republican Party. I mean, uh, America has existed very well in a two-party system. But, uh, he, you know, what? I'm increasingly hearing talks of, of uh, Trump uh, being a fascist leader. Uh, and what do you do? And only because only we're just speculating here for a second. What do you do? If Donald Trump stands up and says to three and a half million Trumpites, because that's the estimate, there's about three and a half million of them out there, and he says to three and a half million Trumpites, we are going to create our own new political party and I'm going to be your leader. And suddenly a brand new political party is born, and then he stands up and says, and in four years I'm going to run again for the presidency of the United States. Well, I think... You know, if you're on the left side of the ledger, you stand back and you cheer a little bit because yeah. that's only going to divide the divide the right. 
Um, you know, I think no matter whether the Republicans win or lose here, I think their party is going to be in shambles for the next four years. No question. Yeah, they're 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 staring at a bleak future, and we'll yeah. have to sit back and enjoy it. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, the morning of the ninth uh, at this radio station and this radio station and thousands of others uh, around the world will be talking about what Americans have done. Uh, and, uh, you know, who, like I said, uh, it's a whole lot closer now than, than it was on Friday. And there are a lot of people and there are predictions. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at one right now that says the, there is a distinct possibility that uh, Donald Trump could win the presidency of the United States. Well, I think the exit polls have been shocking for, you know, they're saying how many people have already voted. You know, I think everybody, 14 million or something. Yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody was thinking that was going to be hugely in you know Hillary's favor because they were presuming that it was people stepping out to vote for her after any one of his missteps. But yeah. that's not what the exit polls are showing. No. So we'll see. Well, our world uh, it, it, uh, is sort of on a knife edge. Uh, we were in conversation with Dylan Switzer. Got a little sidetracked. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to touch bases and talk about the condo from hell, neighbor disputes, crazy restrictions, incompetent condo boards, condo dwellers. Uh, if you're one of them, we'd uh, love to hear from you. If you've got questions, Dylan Switzer, happy to answer. Dylan Switzer, who is a condo specialist in the legal world, if you will, uh, dealing with Stratus, including his own at one point in time, uh, will take your calls. Uh, he's got reams of notes, a couple of file folders with him. But if you want to just uh, go to the phones at 250-862-2525, he would be happy to uh, talk with you uh, and on this day uh, dispense l- legal advice. Let's go to the phones. Patty, good morning. Hi. The reason I'm calling, um, we have a condo, and we're, when there's a um, strata meeting, n- not everybody can be in the strata meeting at once. Is that... Um, Meaning the hall they book is too small? No, no. They just won't allow more than the person that's talking. Everybody has to wait outside. Are, are you talking about a, uh, an annual general meeting nope, or just a monthly, m- monthly meeting? Monthly just a meeting? monthly meeting. Um, well, they're they're allowed to do what are called in camera portions of meetings, where it's it's got to be confidential for privacy for one person or another. For example, if it was a, a financial review of a person applying for financial hardship to allow a rental in a building that doesn't allow rentals, right? Um, but otherwise, you know, you'd want to see what their bylaws say about excluding ownership from meetings and. Even if they do have bylaws that permit that, you might want to give those a keen look, perhaps with the help of a lawyer, to make sure that it's it's an enforceable bylaw. Have they have they given an explanation as to why they do that? No, no. Um, there's a new gal that just moved in, and she's never heard anything so crazy. Yeah, like, she's always been in a strat like in strata meetings. And I have one other question. We've been dealing with a water problem for like five years. Whoa! And we have had no luck to make this right. Well, um, to keep on answering your questions with questions, what kind of water problem are you looking at? Do you, oh, is, it, like is it a leaking issue or is it a pressure issue? There's grit in, the, um, in the, all the faucets. Is it, uh, is it a part of town that everybody struggles with that no, a little it's, bit? it's mainly ours. I think our unit is the first one that gets any of the water from the basement, like where the tanks are. And they, they bypass two tanks, two like, filter tanks. Mm. So it's actually even unique to your to your unit. It's it's not it's not building wide. No, that's what. But they say it's our problem. Well, I, it's not automatically your problem. Um, you know, I I think sadly the way for you, if they've been ignoring you for a while to get this going, is to um to buck up and have a plumber yourself look at it and offer an opinion as to where the problem is originating. Oh I, yeah, we've done that. And I expect that they, they told you that it was originating from common property in the common facilities and not within the pipes in your unit. And if that's the case, then you should be putting pressure on your strata to make sure that's resolved. Yes. Um, can I get your phone number? Sure. Um, uh, you can reach me through switchboard at 250-762-4222. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Patty. Bye. Okay. All right. Uh, that's just how easy it is. And uh, that's the kind of advice that uh, Dylan Switzer, how many years have you been dropping in on us like this? Better part of five years. Oh, maybe yes. even longer. Six, seven, eight, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's been a while. But uh, but I will say to my listeners that, uh, that uh, on an ongoing basis, um, given the lives that most of us live in cooperative ventures called uh, condominiums, uh, and generally they're all strated and uh, they, they exist with rules, 
uh, there's twice that I've that I've uh, bent this young man's ears. Uh, have never been disappointed by the advice and the direction that he's given. Uh, it's always been uh, sound, and uh, as you just heard uh, in conversation with Patty, uh, I think that he very quickly has wrapped his brain around where things might be or where things might go. You've got all these. Oh, we'll take your calls at 250-862-2525. If you do have a question um, dealing with a condo, condo from hell, strata from hell, this is uh, this is your guy. Love to hear from you. You got you got reams and reams of notes here. It was like you're pre- presenting a, a, a disposition, uh, getting ready to present in court. <laughs> well, I didn't know we were going to talk about the U.S. political landscape yeah, for the first right. ten minutes, so I yeah. thought I should come prepared. No, no. Um, so what I do is uh, every time I come up and meet with Phil and we have these chats, I always like to take uh, take an idea of what's happening out there in the world and um, and what I see across my desk and with my colleagues and. And I was just going to talk today about the um, Civil Resolution Tribunal, which is a way to uh, manage conflict in a more cost-efficient fashion. Um, I, I'm looking at Phil there, and I think we have somebody waiting. But um, it, it's another option that we can discuss this morning to allow you to resolve disputes with your counsel, with your neighbors, without necessarily having to, to come to a lawyer um, for the long haul. I think a lawyer at the outset would be a good step, but this could be a new cost-effective mechanism. We can work our way through this morning to, to help and solve some am- problems. It's, it's amazing how a piece of letterhead uh, with uh, some verbiage on it, uh, with a lawyer's name and signature at the bottom of the page, does at times uh, get stratas uh, to focus very specifically where before they didn't seem to have that uh, focus and attention. Yeah, sometimes you just need to get some attention. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, oh, oh, Daniel. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Terry, good morning. Uh, good morning, and good morning to your guest there. Good morning. Um, I, just, I was just wondering if there's a... Um, uh, I'm in an uh, adult uh, community mobile home park here, and I'm just wondering if there's uh, any kind of statute of limitations on improper disclosure type thing. Well, there's a, there's a general two-year limitation rule um, that could cause you some problems, but if there was, and it depends what we're talking about, and I, I hate to throw this word around loosely, but if there was something to the extent of fraud um, or certain types of misrepresentation, you can have things that might last 10 years or even 30 years to an ultimate limitation period where you can take some action. Oh, is that right? Uh, yeah, it, it depends on the nature of, um, of the complaint, but you might have some hope. Oh, good. Well, that's, that's, that's good to know. Great, that's super. Thanks for your help. You'll find you'll find Dylan Switzer at F H and P Lawyers. All right, Terry. Thank you. Have a good day. Um, yeah. So so let's go to this uh, dispute resolution uh, and suggesting that there are other ways other than than uh, than uh, a lawyer. Sure. Well, let's look at this one example. So a few times across my desk recently, I've had people come forward. And um, it, with a complaint about their strata council or with the strata management company that's running their strata council, they feel like their complaints aren't being heard, that they're not discharging their duties appropriately, and they're looking to some help for me. And, and, you know, this is just a good time for me to plug the fact that your strata councils are volunteers. These are people that are neighbors. And as a general rule, I like to give them the benefit of the doubt. They're people that are donating their own time, hopefully to the to the good of all. Trying trying to help manage the building that everybody shares and everybody lives in. That, that's right. And for lots of people, this is a thankless job. It is a very thankless job. I've been there. It's outside of the hours of your working day. Sometimes you don't want to come home and hear a complaint about one neighbor over another, but you deal with it. And and sometimes people aren't happy with how you do. Having said that, there are strata councils that are, you know, lost in the woods a little bit and they're not discharging their duties appropriately. And it's been a very frustrating way for owners to deal with it. You know, they would try to talk to the strata council themselves. They might try to go to a meeting or two. Um, You know, the political process is always available to you. You can show up at the next annual general meeting with an army of supporters and get yourself elected on and you can make the changes happen that you think need to happen. But lots of those processes aren't appealing or possible. And and court, quite frankly, with the help of a lawyer or without, can be you know expensive, time-consuming, stressful. And as such, a lot of complaints weren't being resolved appropriately. And the provincial government, to their credit, this July ruled out this um, dispute uh, resolution tribunal. And it's, um, it's in its infancy, so we don't have a lot of working examples. I know some clients that are using it, but it is... Uh, a very affordable way, primarily through the exchange of emails and um, some online meetings, to uh, resolve a complaint and, if necessary, have a have a hearing 
where you can actually get an enforceable decision to compel change. And that can include a number of different headings, but definitely can in- include situations where you're worried that your council is not doing a, an adequate job. So that is a, it's a new tool that I think that um, should very much be kept in mind for people. Yeah, no kidding. Isn't it amazing how one individual uh, being voted onto a strata council or uh, being voted onto a board or how one individual, uh, it, you know, you, you've got 30 units and 30 owners and there's everybody and everybody seems to be getting along. And then this burr arrives, this agitator, this never satisfied, never happy, gets themselves onto the board. And in the blink of an eye, they change the context uh, of, the, of, of the board that is running the strata and suddenly becomes an unhappy place, a discordant place. Um, and I, I, I'm always amazed at how one individual can be so powerful and have such negative energy that it sort of infuses and, and, and goes right through the whole organization. And, and it's one of those things that I would never blame one owner for not doing anything, but it's the cumulative effect of apathy that leads to that situation. Mm -hmm. You know, you have situations where you have people that were voted on to council when they had, you know, they were um, fresh faced and full of good ideas. And then all of a sudden nobody runs, nobody shows any interest in, in joining it. And the next thing you know, these people have been council for 10, 15, 20 years and there's, there's been no new perspective. And, and then whether it's actual or perceived or, um, just personal, you know, unintentional bias. Favors start getting pulled for certain owners. Other known owners get marginalized. You know, specialty treatment is is dispersed by the council, and then you really do get these toxic councils and these toxic buildings. And I, and I am optimistic that this is going to be a good way to get council or members of council and a complainant together in a virtual room with a qualified arbiter and find a way to reach a resolution that keeps everybody happy. Arbitration is the key, and, and, and the skill set of the individual who steps into the middle. That, that's right. You know, and, and right now, they are, they are taking people that are qualified to handle um, strata disputes, some small claims judges, some lawyers that, are, that have experience with strata, and quite frankly, with people in conflict. Um, just as a brief aside, um, for small claims court, which is another area that is um, a complicated area to work through at times by yourself, depending on the complex nature of your issue, I mean, it's also going to be available in the new year in this uh, conflict resolution tribunal as well. So that should be an interesting way to take some pressure off our courts as well. Yeah, no, we had a, had an interesting conversation, and the name escapes me. Uh, Colin from FHMP, and and we were talking about small claims. Yeah, Colin Enstrom. Yeah. We were talking that was the marijuana in the workplace, yeah, yeah. Uh, legalized so, marijuana so in the Colin, workplace. Colin Flanagan, probably. Colin, Colin Flanagan, yeah. and uh, and we were talking about small claims and small claims court and the change and and the changes that are coming mm-hmm. uh, and access to law and access to lawyers and 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 how does that judge who's sitting there, um, um, I don't know, dispense wisdom or direct or guide? Uh, and suddenly it became a far less uh, frightening place. Sure. Uh, just because of the things that uh, that that uh, Colin was talking about, um, and and explaining that this judge wants you to be comfortable in his courtroom, and and isn't going to treat you uh, with disrespect. He's going to give you respect and probably give you some pretty good direction and advice as your case goes along. No access to justice um, in all walks of life is is a huge problem in Canada and the modern world, and I think this is going to be a good first step to uh, to get there. People want to know more. Where do they find you? Uh, FHP Lawyers. You got it. Just go to uh, Google. Type in FHP Lawyers. Uh, go to the uh, the uh, uh, drop down menu that has all of the uh, uh, lawyers that are uh, practicing at FHP. Uh, find Dylan Switzer uh, and uh, click there, and it'll get you all the connect details. Pleasure to have you here this morning. Oh, my pleasure, as always. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where we go uh, one week from today as Americans go to the <laughs> votes and go to the polls and uh, pick a president in the United States. I'll remember some of the things that you talked <laughs> about earlier this morning.